Okay, sun today, folks, and remember this, Rigel Cantaris B right there, and Rigel Cantaris A. All right, and I got this on photo, so remember to go back to this because nearby known stars in 3D, okay? Now, Rigel Cantaris A is a shitload away from us, okay? But notice nearby known stars because the idea we are harnessing the travel through space idea, make sure and remember where the Chinese thing is at. Now, as we go to here, we want to thank this guy, Minori Yot. I don't even want to say his name and get him, you know, people say my name wrong. Okay. There you go. And he got that picture this morning, I believe this was. So, uh, pretty much the same thing that we saw, i.e. the tail, on my, and I kind of stretched it out a couple, but the idea that it is our terahydrons, tetrahydrons, because they don't like that. So bleeding the truth some more here, learning, and also I'm going to show you videos that basically there are, I am not in legal trouble in the idea that there is the lobbying. Now, remember the triangulation and remember that this is not, this, this is up there. The Chinese space station is up there. They even gave us the shot of what we're going to show you that what we've always been showing you down at Nehemiah, okay, which is basically more than likely Rigel Cantaris B, and we're going to show you that the idea that I'll be able to sniff out sooner or later through the years or within the next few hours or days or whatever, how long it takes, the idea that you know that the idea that, okay, you've got this small star or moon or whatever it is, and these here too, okay? There's no way a goddamn satellite, the idea that the planet, that everybody figures that the idea that the, everybody's found, that we figure that more than likely there's something up there, is more than likely not this. Now, they may end up calling it that, but the idea that the Chinese space station is up there, but Chinese or who, and I don't give a crap about politics because the idea that, okay, the Chinese are up there, okay, they own a shitload of our treasury bills, okay, China planning to send uh, basically remote controls up to there, and then the idea that they're eventually going to end up more than likely inhabiting that. Who the hell knows? They could be inhabiting it now. The Chinese don't care if the idea of an astronaut died, okay? They would just basically prop up a hero uh, to be the f first one that lives up there and so forth and so on. So, I mean, they could be up there now, okay? The secret behind uh, Area 51 is the United States didn't even want to let anybody know about m us using monkeys as guinea pigs, okay? They didn't want anybody up in arms, folks, years and years ago, okay? So, this, he gave you that photo, and that pretty much matches what we've seen in Hawaii. So, more than likely, that may have been... Uh, Love joy, or it doesn't matter, a comet that went across the sky, or one of these terahydrons that I call it, because these come right down to Earth, and we're going to show you it down at Nehemiah and Palau today. Okay, we're roughly around 50,000 more miles to go, and remember that this is what's pretty much going on today, so the idea of the moon is not giving you a shadow of the sun because it's not directly in line and not hitting the Earth, okay? Now, it could get some kind of a reflection, but it's not giving you the... And this is today. And the idea that the distance is comes down to, and I think I pretty much have it here, and it doesn't really matter. It's 50,000 miles. Okay, this is the recent pictures. And basically, if you freeze this, this is the stars that get are bleeding down to the Earth. Okay, and you can pay attention to the times when I got the photos and so forth. And I zoomed in on them at 1,000 on that. Okay, now this should show up. And I think the time will be on one of these. i.e. triangulation like we just seen up in space with Mars, folks. So that's not the satellite that's up there. The satellite is up there, but anybody's going to tell you, astronomer, anybody that follows satellites when they go by Earth here, okay, it's so far off up by Mars, you ain't going to see that son of a bitch like that, okay? Now, you would through a telescope, but it's not going to be that bright and that big because either that or they're lying to us how small Mercury or Mars is, okay? So these are all zoomed in on these star clusters, and basically in the future I'll probably show you at... KT station, and this is what I wanted to open up with to make you pay attention because this is what's blown up from this movie, i.e. from yesterday, which would basically be two years, two days ago as far as a picture, two days ago as far as a picture. Let's go to the video from today. Okay, video playing from yesterday, okay? Now, what are they showing? Yeah, the 20th, okay? But the idea, they're GMT time, so there you go. Same thing I just showed you in the photo, okay? And the idea that I've showed in past videos, okay? And it'll come back around and again. So this is what we zoomed in on the other day. I believe it was the 19th video. Doesn't really matter about the date too much. The idea is within the last couple of days. We zoomed in on it. And there's your object at KC Station. 
basically it's there. Not the moon, ladies and gentlemen. And the time will prove that. I ate these terahydrins earlier this year in a park in the United States, and there you go. There's your figure eight. There's your eight ball, and you can see the illuminations back here of the object and so forth. It's zoomed in on there and also there. These are objects out in space that are being illuminated down to Earth. Here's replay of the movie on the 20th. And we should be moving in here on the evening hour. There it was. There was the, uh, the, the object. And I'll be able to go. To basically, it showed up again. But it also showed up again on this side. And you should be able to see it through the movie here. Now, this is the man-made little stake that's out there. So don't let that mess you up. But the idea that you'll see the other blotch come over on the other side. There you go. Bam, bam. And then it was basically bam and bam. It triangulated left and right. So I'm going to have to go back and grab some pictures there. And also you've seen the shadow just come across there. And I'll show you the quakes action within a little bit. There it goes again. Popped up again. And those are not people walking out there. And there you go. And here it comes in. Here you get this action. And hope this will play fast so I can hurry up and sneak in also. So now this is the object that basically this is Rigor Cantaris B or whatever in the Chinese satellite as it went up to Mars or whatever or where it's positioned at was able to see that and film that. And that's on my earlier video when I thank China. Panties, uh, one or whatever the ones back by my panties, uh, panties off the super giants and so forth. Okay, so let's go to some other footage. Pay attention, folks, and you're going to see the dark cloud that came in yesterday at Casey, okay? There is a cloud like mirrored image black and it's going to come up right here where that cloud is at like that and then you see that whiteness over there this bs about there being a spaceship there's no spaceship but there's getting we're getting these wild reflections and people are going to start making it into the crap that it's not okay it comes in like a black light it looks like this puddle down here on the ground okay you see that puddle but that's just a puddle of water folks but what this cloud does up here in the sky is it does an impression like that in the sky and basically it's heat penetrating through these clouds and you're going to get star clusters here that you see right here these are star clusters and I've got photos of those in another video I'll show you that I captured and you'll see them as they're going through it's not ice from weather okay okay the video quit and I'm used to going to take you to and you'll see that there actually if you go watch the KC station you'll see the objects come through the air too that these ice clusters that are farther down the line that basically they're not ice they are and they basically there was one of our terahydrons that went across the sky there so if you watch and back up this and play this video again and this, this plays fast, so I'll just let this go through again here real fast. But you did have the footage of it a minute ago, too. Try to save time. But you will see these ice. Basically, they're uh, <coughs> these are holograms that come up here of the star clusters. And they were better yesterday on the yesterday's footage. But you see that. That's not snow, folks. That's not snow and sleet. Those are star clusters that are merging down. And it's like M22, okay? Now, the time that that happens, it's Rigel Cantaris B doing that, I believe. Okay, as this rotates, basically there's all the earthquakes and I'm going to take the deal and you'll see idea that this was just within the last week and probably less than the week because I'm going to mess with the lever and you will see how much it's been within since we sent that 7.1, which was like last week, I think. We had the 7.1 and it shows such a big footprint. Bam, there you go. So you can see that, like that was almost a week ago or more. But there is halfway, and that's not even probably a week worth of earthquake activity. And you got a 2.8 lately down there in Baja. So welcome to Earthquakeville, folks. Sorry about that on the mic. And since we are at 17.53 GMT time right now, and we are at the 12.28 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are getting action right now as we speak and do this video. That action is going on today which you will end up seeing more than likely tomorrow as long as the webcams stay up down there at, at Niemeyer. And I want to thank the German scientists for all the views down there. It's awesome stuff. Okay, here's Jupiter's moons and basically direct view, folks, just like from Earth. Okay, you're looking up there. East is, is your left. You're just like you're standing in North America, you put your left hand to, towards the east and you put your uh, right hand towards the west or what, vice versa. And the idea that east is going to be left, and that's your view, and there's your moons. Okay, I'm not, I got Saturn, and I'll pop that real fast, I guess. Again, direct view. So there's Saturn's. They all have moons there, five. And actually, there is more than on Saturn than what they're telling you. This is what's worrying scientists, folks. There are pre, uh, time, father time out there in space. There is gas coming out of them. So the idea that what's worrying people is the idea, okay, could space just all of a sudden, boom, catch on fire? Because there is gas coming out, okay? 
and then they're trying to scare people here on Earth about that there's gas coming out of Well, if there's methane gas coming out of over there in the Soviet Union and whatever the hell, they need to go over there and clean up and take care of that action shit then. So anyway, that's a bunch of horse hockey. There's always methane coming up out of the ground naturally somewhere. And then somebody usually goes and puts a hole in the ground and sells it for money. So remember the 3D close to Earth, folks. And like I said, Rigel Canteris B is, and more than likely, this is it. Because this is zoomed in from today, from those pictures I showed you from the movie from Palau. Okay? This was zoomed in picture today, and my past videos have also zoomed in and taken this picture. Okay? So Rigel Canteris B is up. Rigel Canteris B is in this super giants, folks. Okay? So it's high above Earth and or below and comes up. Okay? And at Fireball, you can pretty much see Rigel Canteris B or what we suppose is Rigel Canteris B, and it pretty much is what we see over here. And the magnification of it is bigger because it's more than likely one of these. It doesn't matter. There's more than one sun in the Supergiants, and they're showing at night. These are all nighttime shots, folks, and it's coming up and showing up, okay? It's not Jupiter, and it's not uh, Mars. It's not the moon because the moon is not full right now. You see that? Okay, and there. And then I'm also going to show you what uh, M22, which stands for Mass 22, is in front of the sun. And there's a real good shot there of uh, what's going on. And you can see that there's way more than one cluster, pretty much the same thing that we have coming down. And this is all east coast coming up in the middle of the night, folks. So go outside and get amazed because this stuff's out there. And it rises and sets, okay? And we've sold, showed Ryan a set of Rigel Canteris before in the video, so watch my video. Okay, here's M22 right now currently in North America. The moon, Mercury, Jupiter. I mean, Venus, sorry about that. V Jupiter's usually the biggest, so Jupiter, I believe, is back that way. Saturn, okay? So that's North America currently in your constellations, and we'll show you that as we go up. And then we'll also, let me center it. Sorry about that for anybody who's an astrologer and going nuts and liking the show or something. Who knows? And then let's go up. Now, Rigel A and B also near this, the sun. And as you see, they are kind of trying to hide the hide the information of Rigel Canteris B, folks. You see that? How they're kind of trying to hide it? Okay, there it is. That's Mass 22, and it's in front of the sun, just like I just showed you. Okay? So the sun is in the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? It's a globular cluster, M22. Mass 22 is pretty much what it stands for, okay? Uh, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get to see how hot and bright it is and stuff like that. So, average radius. So, it's a cluster. Anyway, Rigel Canteris B is what we're seeing down. And just like the the uh, figure eight that I showed you earlier in the in the year in the, in the U.S. parks, you can see the star cluster like a figure eight going around the Terra Hydrants. And when Mother Nature's gives us a filter, folks, I showed you earlier on photos this year, and it might even be on my Supergiant site still. But anyway, you can see the filtering of, this, of the clouds makes you see what's up there in front of the sun, okay? Mass 22 is up there in front of the sun, folks. And then earlier this year, we had the, all kinds of these being seen, and I got a shot of that down in, in Antarctica now. I.e., like a searchlight, yep, but those searchlights ended up seeing this, Okay. And it is Rigel Canteris B, folks. You see those different images of light that come around? So more than likely, this is the mass that comes out in front of Rigel Canteris B. And it's more than likely a moon, just like M22 of the sun. Okay? It's a mass like M22 is on the sun. Okay? And the idea that that's what you get a picture of if you go out and take a picture of the sun right now, you are getting a picture of M22, okay? That dark spot you get, that's just like the dark spot in a 35 millimeter film that uh, the famous photographer, I'm going to end up saying his name wrong right now, Ansel Adams, ended up getting. This is the mass that's in front of Rigel Canteris B, but also there is a mass like this that's in front of the sun lately and that is M22 ladies and gentlemen so when you go outside now and take a picture of the Sun folks M22 is what ends up coming up in front of the Sun okay mass 22 okay that gives you that blue purple 
But that what the purple that I showed you was Rigel Canteris B. What's in front of Rigel Canteris B? We don't know what the name of that is yet. I.e., this is Rigel Canteris B down there at 2 o'clock in the morning UTC time, and it's small, boom, boom, and then it's got something in front of it just like M22, okay? Watch the next video. More in Electrical Theory on Lovejoy.